Hello, hi, I'm Niaz uh, from Monash University, Malaysia. So my question is directed to the first two speakers, and it's more on the measurement ground, uh, because you both have a shared finding, which is that, uh, you know, a high achievement in the field of education and how that is helping to improve outcome distribution, but not so much in terms of inequality of opportunities. But again, you know, so uh, Jordan, for example, you highlight. But these are countries that are terribly achievement and this is very well established that all these countries perform at the bottom of the student uh, outcomes and that's really what matters today so i wonder how do you defend your you know assessment that these are countries uh, educationally performing very well and the second point again on measurement ground is that these are rentier states uh, where therefore measured uh, income based on service is really not uh, the right way to assess inequality and i was wondering why you haven't considered for example absolute gini uh, because the relative income inequality in sort of you know growing distance of in, in absolute income gaps, right? So that I think would have been more reflective of the kind of inequality uh, in this part of the world. Um, and again, you know, I think Vladimir, for you, um, uh, so uh, where you using gross income Gini or net income Gini again, uh, because this can, this region has very poor transfer uh, redistributive policies. And again, we know about Nordic countries where you know, high market income uh, Gini, but very low relatively when it is uh, based on uh, net income uh, data. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Maria Lobu, University of Bari. Uh, so first, thanks uh, both for the presentations. Very, very interesting. Um, my question is for Paul Magisi. So, um, uh, in your friend, I, I really enjoyed the, the discussion and the, the model. If I understood correctly, uh, in your framework, um, so the part uh, a la Romer that, uh, uh, you know, the part of inequality which is not fair is the one which is not attributed, attributable to effort. Um, that's reproduced in a way in your framework. I was wondering, uh, um, so the part of what you call luck, which is basically not effort, not uh, circumstances, uh, but it can be also uh, kind of uh, intelligence or uh, innate abilities. Of course, this component uh, may not be fair, a fair source, but might be an efficient source of inequality. And second, it might be correlated with effort, right? Um, so I was wondering uh, whether you take this into account and uh, how does, what are the implications in that? So in the in both the presentations, um, we have opportunity, inequality of opportunity, which is uh, the chance, let's say, to go to school. Yeah. Opportunity of education, inequality in the opportunity to to get an education. So, but uh, that is different from the, the opportunity that gave someone education. Okay, so I'm wondering what is a, it seems to me that there's a difference between those two. So that's my first question. The second question has to do with the um, how people react to inequality in society, in a community. Does inequality enter utility function, if I can use that term? If it, if it does enter, does it enter as a bad thing or as a good thing? Maybe it looks like you have not understood me. No, I, I don't understand your question, so can, can you repeat it? Both, both, both of them, or both of them, or one of them? I, uh, the, the second one, the last part, I think, okay. uh, I think you wanted to answer. Yeah, yeah. Just be careful. Okay, okay. 
So in equality of opportunity, uh, does it enter the utility function? Does it enter the utility function of an individual? If it does enter, does it enter as a band or as a good? That's my question. And then the, the, other, the other question is, uh, I notice that you are using conditional quantiles consistently rather than unconditional. I actually expect that you would use unconditional, but uh, somehow you don't want that. Okay. Um, the, the last question has to do with the, the first the first presentation about the, the various inequalities, inequality in uh, pollution, inequality in um, sanitation, and so on. Can all this be aggregated into one? And uh, have you understood the question? This in, can, if, if they can be aggregated into one, is there a way of constructing that aggregate without having to go through the individual inequalities. Thank you very much. Uh, so first, uh, thank you for the uh, the uh, for uh, really correcting some of the language I used during the presentation. Uh, uh, it was not about not income; it was uh, uh, consumption, uh, and so. Uh, because that's that's more reliable and more available across uh, household surveys in uh, in developing countries, especially in the uh, and maybe especially in Arab region. Um, your question about quality of education is uh, very well taken. So I think uh, so. My presentation uh, was kind of an, a mosaic of the different forms of inequalities that we encounter and that we might worry about in the region. But it's not an exhaustive. Uh, picture and uh, so quality of education is one where it's it's notoriously bad in the region and uh, that's not covered here because we don't we just don't have uh, data and we don't have it across years across countries uh, in a reliable way so this is really about just the years of education uh, or you know achieving some um, uh, some you know, uh, attendance attainment and so on um, but not uh, not the learning outcomes. So um, I think uh, I think we we should introduce uh, uh, um, additional analysis of something like uh, uh, PISA or TIMS scores um, as one measure of uh, learning outcomes. Um, that's, uh, should I go to other questions? Uh, yeah, okay. Then the uh, next question uh, from you. Um, you asked about, uh, I kind of rushed through the presentation and uh, I didn't uh, talk much about the methodology of, uh, let's say, the, uh, the Development Inequalities Index, how it was constructed. Um, uh, a lot of work went into this index and also the, the related uh, indices, like I mentioned, the, the Global Human Development Index. And then for the, for the region, ESCO has developed uh, uh, an Economic Resilience Index and, uh, uh, and uh, Developmental uh, Challenges Index, which, uh, and a lot of... Um, you know, a validation test in, uh, went into uh, the structure, the uh, which which dimensions and sub-dimensions so there should be, what weights uh, uh, each component should should have, um, uh, how each indicator should be formatted. Do we do we cut off the the values of uh, these variables and so on? And uh, but I think uh, so. I guess we could say that the current uh, form of the index is kind of a compromise of what, uh, 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 where we try to achieve continuity and com comparability with the other indices. We also uh, were restricted by uh, data available. So especially in the, in the governance uh, inequalities and the environmental uh, uh, dimension, uh, there are clear limitations. So for example, uh, on the environment, uh, we don't have any, remember that we need a global indicator available for 
159 or more countries for uh, for multiple years so that we can compare the development between say 2010 and 2020 and uh, so for the environment currently we have only two uh, uh, horizontal measures of um, um, kind of exposure to environmental degradation so it's uh, the mortality to um, uh, mortality to uh, ambient uh, indoor pollution and mortality to uh, lack of hygiene and water and so on. So, um, <clears throat> so the so it's uh, it's especially in those uh, uh, dimensions. Uh, the current index is kind of a compromise of what what was available. So. Um, I will answer your question first uh, and then uh, move to your uh, many questions. Um, so uh, you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if I, because I don't have any, uh, I don't have a table with a pen to take notes. So you ask, um, what about uh, innate talents or let, let's call it IQ or, in, uh, no, I don't like the IQ concept, but Ability, okay, uh, general ability. Uh, some people have more ability at birth, and this may influence the capacity to make an effort, and this may influence also the outcome. How could we account, because this is circumstance, essentially disability is a circumstance at birth. And it's a very important question because uh, those are in the circumstances we don't have in the data set. But if if you follow me, and we made the following assumption, and I think we will be okay if we make the following assumption, but I may be wrong, and I'm open to criticism. Uh, if we assume that ability is independent of circumstances at birth, then it enters into this residual lock term, and then we are back to the framework that we are in. And whatever remains that influences this capacity to invest in an effort is these initial circumstances. And in the way that we have measured it, we are into Romer's framework, we have wiped out those differences that are explained by uh, initial circumstances. So, for instance, I'm a professor, my spouse is a professor, we have three kids, two of them have PhDs and jobs, and the other one has finished a master and she's doing a Juris Doctors. They are good. We're proud of them. But probably the initial circumstances were good at home, okay? Because in terms of education, we were at the top of the distribution. So they have some merit, but part of this is influenced by the circumstance at birth. And of course, a rich parent can invest into private tutoring and all these kind of things that influence the, the, the investment in effort of the person. So this is wiped out when you take Romer's framework. Uh, is it a sufficient answer? Yeah, okay. Um, um, then your question. So I will start first with the, does inequality of outcome and inequality of opportunity both enter the utility function of Homo sapiens, huh? not Homo economicus, Homo sapiens. So we are Homo sapiens here. My answer is yes, of course. And uh, our ex so I have an experimental economist here, and our experimental friend know that. So if you run a, a, a how do you call this, an ultimatum game where you share a, a cake, uh, uh, it's, you, and the person can decide to keep everything for him herself, uh, this decision is always punished, <laughs> okay? So you, you have to move to something that is closer to half and half. Not to half and half, but closer to half and half. We, don't, we know that homo sapiens be, behave like that. We know that most primates behave like that because they repeated the experience with the other kind of primate except the chimpanzee. This guy behaved like Homo economicus. So none of us here are chimpanzees. So it enters into our uh, uh, utility function. We also know, and we thanks to our uh, Scandinavian colleagues, that people make a difference between inequality of opportunity and inequality of outcome when they compensate. They have run experiment. These. Uh, brilliant Scandinavian, and they can show that when the inequality of outcome is more due to uh, an effort uh, in an exercise, then it's 
more, less compensated than when it's pure luck. And this is a 2020, our 2021, I'm not sure, Journal of Political Economy, a very interesting paper. It's not my feed, so I don't have the uh, exact uh, citation. Now, we know that it enters into the utility function. Do we want to account for this in our measurement framework? Maybe, I don't know. It depends. So if we are utilitarian, and we have a measurement framework that is based on the utilities of people. Yes, of course, we want to account for that. Uh, equality of opportunity is not based on the utilitarian framework. If you go out of economics and you look where it comes from, um, essentially it's a response to node six. So uh, the Marxist, they don't, they don't have an ethical principle, but implicitly they don't like exploitation. And when Nudzik, the libertarian guy, came with his critique, it, it, it hurt a lot Marxists, and it was on the procedure of extracting the work of someone. And the answer of analytical Marxism was this inequality of opportunity concept. And John Romer is an analytical Marxist, so this is how it came into economics from the analytical Marxist philosopher. It's not a utilitarian framework, it's a different framework. So. They're, they don't care about utility, they care about the process that have generated that outcome. Okay. Um, but we may want to care, but not in that paper because this is not the approach we, we take. Then another question, uh, I don't remember you. A uh, conditional quanta, yes. If you are within Romer's framework, and this is not our work because I'm not alone on this paper, this is John Romer's work. Uh, the, ob the mathematical object of interest on which you assess inequality of opportunity is the conditional quantile function, not the unconditional. The unconditional quantile function is the inverse of the CDF, and the CDF is pure inequality. Okay, it's inequality of outcome, but we're not interested in inequality of outcome. We want to compare those conditional quantile functions. <laughs> Why are we using Chernozukov et al. to estimate? Uh, because we have mass probability at zero, and uh, this approach allows us to do that. You do a probe at zero, and, 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 and it's consistent. Um, if you have a continuous outcome other than income with no mass probability, you can use a standard concurrent best set on a grid of point and it will do the job also. Uh, does this answer all your question? Thank you so much. Uh, so I think Vladimir and Paul have answered, uh, covered all the points, but maybe one thing, if I understood it correctly, so your question was about um, the improvement, right, in, in the countries when it comes to um, access to uh, uh, education and health. And basically, the findings show that uh, we, we, everybody goes to school, right? So when we look at every attendance, um, regardless of gender, regardless of the wealth quintile the household or the child belongs to, everybody goes to school. But the, the question is, how long they remain in school, right? And, and this is still problematic in many countries in the region. Um, in some countries, um, a lot of children disadvantaged, in disadvantaged groups, um, they, they drop out of school in early years, even before completing primary. Uh, but in most countries, the problem occurs at secondary levels. Uh, and, and, and this is what has been shown in you know, uh, so many studies on inequality of opportunity in education. But I'm not sure if I answered the, your question, though. But, but I, you know, we can... Yes, please. No, no, please, go ahead. Uh, so again, my point was because we don't really refer to governance. Right? No. And, and your sample is uh, comprising of countries that are autocratic, uh, have very poor regards for rule of law, and then rentier states right. where oil and wind has been used to build schools without accountability. And then this is why it actually happened because it's an aspirational failure that you gave diplomas without skills and opportunities, right? So I think the point is that when you do this inequality opportunities, uh, the opportunity set has to be context-specific. 
No point very well taken. And I totally agree that the region, when we talk about the MENA region, you know, we shouldn't talk about it as, it's, as if it's a one group because there are lots of differences if we talk about GCC countries and the other countries. Um, and if we include Iran and Turkey, that's, that's, that's another issue. So, so point very well taken. So, yeah. One question for you. For Paul? Paul? You asked this to me. I, I'm not. I'm not Egyptian. So uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I can tell you uh, what it means as a Lebanese parent. So uh, we're not cool parents. <laughs> so we're rough on our kids. Uh, from a Western standard, they, they will say, "Oh, this is crazy." No, you have to work. <laughs> uh, my spouse uh, lived under bombs and things like this. Oh. I think I'm a little bit stressed. It doesn't feel well with her. With her. It doesn't fly. <laughs> so uh, this, I think, is part of the white advantage. Uh, this idea that you should be... Uh, yeah, anyways. And I think it influences performance. But in Egypt, I don't know. I don't know. I, I have Egyptian friends. Uh, but I didn't think... Uh, talked about your, their parenting style. We talk about papers more. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't let you answer. I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we have lots of Egyptians in the room, but I, I, I don't know. But maybe I want to suggest to continue this conversation. We have two hours uh, that we'll be spending in the reception, and I'm happy to continue this conversation later, but I don't want to keep the others more than that. I really want to thank the speakers for really informative presentations. And I want to thank you all for, uh, for being here and for your active participation. And um, yeah, and see you in the reception. <laughs>